Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be taking a look at a very unique kind of approach, a charted visual approach. Now many times when we think about instrument approaches, we think about them in terms of, ooh, let's center the needles and go, go, go. But we never think about them in terms of having a specific kind of approach to determine an IFR flight plan that might involve just looking as opposed to using specific types of instruments. So this type of approach today is that approach. Uh, this is actually going to be the River Visual 19 into Washington, Ronald Reagan, Washington National Airport. That's uh, Kilo Delta Charlie Alpha, for those of you who want to give this one a try. Now, this one is kind of neat, because what we're going to be doing is that we're going to be flying here where we have a bunch of these little islands uh, right near the American Legion Memorial Bridge, and we are going to attempt to follow the river. We're supposed to follow the river, keep in mind. And now notice it has altitudes. It recommends 3,000 initially, 1,800 initially, down to 1,200, down to 900, all the way down to the actual pop, 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 not through Papa 56. This is how you get shot down. And then we're going to actually land on runway 19er here, which is like a lot of fun. Now, what makes this such a cool approach here is you're going to notice down here in Washington, we have ourselves a VOR, which is going to be also a DME, so we can actually identify where we are on this arc. Our bigger challenge is actually going to be to go ahead and figure out where all these waypoints are along the journey. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that out of the way real quick. I'll go switch to flight sim mode here, and now you can kind of get an idea of just how absurd this particular one is. All right, so we're going to go ahead and dial in our initial frequencies. So we're looking for 111.0. Oh, that's uh, nice and confusing for me. CV, I'm going to go ahead and press that, 111.0. And now we're going to go ahead and set that real quick. Swap that. And you can see we're 28 nautical miles away. So remember, that procedure begins when you're 10 nautical miles away. So something like this. Yeah, there it is. And we can see right off our nose there that we have a Washington proper. So this is where it starts to get tricky. So if I look out of my window real quickly here, and I'll look directly below me, you can see that bridge that we know, mentioned in that other part. So what I'm going to do to kind of help us out a little bit here is to go ahead and shrink this image a little bit, and I'll go ahead and toss it over in the corner so I can show you sort of what we have to do in order to make this work. Let me go ahead and grab that real fast. I'll go ahead and switch it to desktop mode so you have a pretty good look at that. Of course, you're going to see everything I've got going on, but that's all right. And you can see we are going ahead and now crossing our initial point here. And now the reason I know this is our initial point is because if I look down here in the bottom right corner, I can see we have crossed that first arc. So what we're going to do now is we're actually going to be flying along this river, and we're going to get ready for our initial descent. Now, the interesting thing is they've asked us to descend to 1,800 feet by the time we get to the six arc on the DME. That's actually uh, pretty far away, and it's actually going to happen real fast. I'm actually going to start my descent right away and go ahead and stick the nose over one and fly the sucker. I only need to reduce power a little bit. I mean, we're at Mooney. We're supposed to go fast. Now, what makes this such a neat approach, and I, like I said, I get so tickled by stuff like this, is the fact we have to maintain, basically, visual over the river during our approach here. So, you know, we're kind of cruising along. Again, in the real world, so we can't look out the window this easily. Uh, one of the fun tricks, of course, that you can do is you can always uh, stick your head, not the head. You can tilt the plane and go like this and look out the window. That's usually a pretty effective strategy to make your customers or your passengers, uh, depending naturally on what you have at your disposal, um, a little concernicus is uh, kind of the easiest way to say it. So we're just going to proceed here. And uh, again, we're looking over at the DME. We're at 8.5 on the DME right now. And we're just going to stay over the river. You can see we're basically hugging the uh, south bank at the moment here. So we actually have to come out a little bit. Now, if you are on a GPS, uh, this is a very, very easy process. Uh, because again, you can just look over. Uh, when you're flying this at night, it's incredibly challenging to execute this particular approach here on account of the fact that there's just so many things that are going to get in the way here. So I'm going to start executing a nice gentle right turn here. If I look out the window here, you can see how, again, we're just trying to stay there. And there's our next bridge right there on the right, if you look kind of at um, the airplanes at uh, 1 o'clock or so. And we're just going to go and kind of hang off over on this. Uh, the best we can is we continue to descent downwards to about 8, 1,800 feet. I'm actually going to use power quite a bit here. We're going much too fast for this. These are Mooney speeds. <laughs> uh, the funny thing about the Mooney, of course, is that the one that I fly in the real world. It is, I like to describe things as Mooney speeds. I call it re-entering orbit with this thing. Because uh, when you're coming down, you can descend up to the yellow line. That's perfectly acceptable. And it's just, you know, kind of an effective strategy. Because this thing goes pretty high and it's pretty quick. So it's just a nice little shock there. All right, so we're proceeding right along here. And you can see our next big objective here. And we got 6.0. So this will be called the chain bridge. Is going to be the next one that we're going to hit. And we're supposed to be hitting that at about 1,800 feet. So we're going to be just a teeny tiny bit high when we cross it there. Nothing excessive. But like I said, it is a pretty aggressive descent here. Let's continue. And again, we're just trying to basically maintain. Remember, we're going very, very fast here. One of the fun things in the uh, Moody that I fly is I have the press to descend button. It's also known as the speed brakes. Um, you don't have to change power. You just push the button, and all of a sudden, you got 500 feet per minute down. 
it is a great feature. All right, that's a 6.0. That would be 12, 1,800 feet. We're 300 feet high, so we're still a little fast and we're a little high. But again, we just want to do the best we can to stay as over this river as we can. You can see how challenging this would be for an even bigger aircraft, as you can probably imagine. All right, I'm going to pull it all the way down to 15 inches. And the real Mooney that we I fly would be jamming. Well, the cow flaps would be closed anyway. But that would definitely be something to consider. All right, we're looking for 1,200 feet at 4 DME. And again, uh, the most dangerous part of this entire journey is coming up in just a minute. And that's basically when we're going to be crossing a DC proper. We really aren't supposed to cross where we're going to see the Washington Monument there. All right, 5.1. I can pull the nose up just a little bit. We got a pretty aggressive descent here. And again, it's because our airspeed is just so high. Start again, stay as in the middle of this river as you possibly can. Yes, this is an approach. A little bit of the new uh, Microsoft patented turbulence there. Love that. There we go, about 1,200 feet at about 400 D 4 DME. We're actually pretty close this time. About 4 DME, 1,200 feet. Not bad. Not bad at all. Hey, sometimes I got it, sometimes I don't. There we go, about 4.2, 1,200 feet. Nice. All right, we're going to come swing this way now. Uh, we have a very short distance here. If you take a look right there, the bridge I'm staring at, that guy right there that's uh, right next to the Georgetown Reservoir, which should be on my left. Yep. And uh, basically, we're going to be crossing that one. Uh, that's our key bridge. Key bridge. Now, this is the most dangerous part. If you look out my window right here, do you see you've got the Washington Monument kind of hanging out there? We're really, really not supposed to cross that green. So uh, one of the things that I've learned from flying the uh, Skyline approach, which is in New York City, is you basically... Uh, yeah, kind of round corners when you can. It's the only real safe way to do this. Now, for us, according to our little document there, we can go right over that island. Like, see the little island that's coming up on our right there? That's going to be the island we're basically going to hang out over. Yeah, this is a very relaxing approach. Of course, it's not nighttime. <laughs> but um, I've actually seen this approach uh, when we flew into DCA, which is uh, super duper fun. Uh, we actually get to watch this approach, but there's an instrument approach version of this as well, which is quite a gas. Now, I have no desire to come anywhere close to being on the wrong side of that bridge there. We've got the Roosevelt Memorial coming up. We have the Arlington. And, of course, we have the uh, George Memorial as well coming up. And then there's the Rochambeau right there. Again, I'm not playing tour guide here. I'm just making sure you all know. All right, I'm going to shave this corner off very aggressively. And we're looking for about 900 feet. Uh, that's going to be at the three DMAs. We just crossed that. We're about, you know, 50, 60 feet up, which isn't too bad. Gotta stay to the right. Stay to the right. <laughs> Look at this. Isn't that awesome? It's a long par five to the nation's capital. Awesome stuff. This is so cool. I actually have a video on my cell phone of uh, flying this approach. It's kind of neat. All right, cool. So now we have the hard part. Uh, of course, you're probably like, that wasn't the hard part. No, the hard part is you still have to land. Uh, that's, that's kind of the downside. Now, if you look off your nose here, you'll notice there are several runways waiting for us and calling. They just want us to land on us. But unfortunately, we want the one that's marked 1-9-er. So one of the mistakes people make here is they see that runway right there. Wrong runway. Wrong 9 is actually over here. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, are you kidding me? Why would they do it that way? Now, be careful here. See how you almost flew over the Pentagon? That's exactly my point. See how tempting that was to land on that one? Don't do that. You need to make sure you land on the correct runway here. So one niner is actually the one that's on the left there. It's that one right there. It is not that one. And if you look really, really carefully, see the big old one niner sitting there at the end of the runway? Can you imagine how bad it would have been if we just flew over the top of the Pentagon with that little propeller jockey? Yeah, we'd be done flying kind of a thing like that. So the reason I pointed that one out is just how sketchy these approaches can actually be. I'm going to lift the nose up there. And we're going to go ahead and dirty the plane up and get ready for landing. Swing us around. I'm going to do a gumps checks. Landing gears down. I'll go ahead and get some flaps in in a second. Yeah, and I feel like I'm moving in slow motion after traveling at 150 downhill here. But uh, that's a Mooney for you. There we go. Just going to kind of bring us to the right. Look at how easy that was. Nice. Whoop, a little bit of crosswind. Nothing too serious, though. And we just got to get down to our usual approach speed. Isn't that wild of an approach that it would bring you that close to all these really cool things and then almost make you fly over the top of uh, the Pentagon? Yeah, you see exactly the concern there. I'm right, just going to line ourselves up here. Nice and easy. Ah, such a long runway. It feels like we're moving in slow motion here. 
Wait, do you see how wide this runway is? Yep, and yeah, at least we're on glide slope for anything. Anyway. There is a very nice uh, RNAV approach that does the same thing we're doing right here. I'm just gonna hold the nose up just a little bit. We have a lot of speed here that we need to kill. And runway made. There we are. One of the fun things about the Moni is uh, trying to get it to slow down. <laughs> it's, it is quite an involved process. down just like that nice all right as you can see the, the visual approach is kind of a different way to approach things uh, literally and figuratively uh, the key thing there is uh, make sure you study it carefully it's uh, definitely something that if you got google earth handy uh, you're going to want to benefit from looking over it really carefully to make sure that when you do go to land you don't try to fly over the pentagon enjoy